So hello and welcome, I'm Frederick Dunn and today I'm going to walk you through step by step how to check for Varroa destructor mites on your bees using the dry powder sugar shake or sugar roll method. So today we're looking at Layton's hives finally. These are insulated hives with sheep's wool and I purchased both of these hives from Dr. Leo Shirashkin's website horizontalhive.com. So one of the things I also purchased was the wax foundation that Dr. Leo sells, which came from Spain, uh, thinking that the wax, of course, is coming from an area where industrial pesticides are not in use, therefore the foundation wax is a little better. So I'm gonna show you some of the frames. We pulled them up out of here. These are Layens frames. They do not match up with the standard Langstroth frames. So when you're working with Layens hives, uh, everything is unique to the Layens hive configuration right down to the frame sizes, but they're bigger, so they accommodate the brood better. At least that's the theory. And I can't see that, say that there's anything wrong with that. Some of the comb here is a little wonky, so I'm showing that. The other thing is I keep all my frames in order so I don't shift them around and it's perfectly fine with me. If they make bridge comb or burr comb or they spread their frames out at strange angles like that one was done. Also, the frames form their own cover board when you push them all together. And this one I've added four new frames of foundation. So we're expanding this hive. This one is uh, going pretty well. We still have room for expansion there. Horizontal hives instead of supering. You just pull out the follow board and add frames as you go. So now we're on to another Layens hive and we're looking again at what would be a honey super, but these are just honey frames. And it's interesting to notice the sagging that's on this that's occurred with the foundation frames. So you probably don't want to expand them ahead of the population growth of the colony so that they can take care of it. Uh, this colony is full. No more room for expansion, which is why I had to buy more horizontal hives in order to accommodate the extra here so I could try to keep their populations down and uh, expand. But this one, of course, swarmed recently. In fact, it swarmed twice and every frame is in use. So here we go. On the left, I have a single entrance. We've insulated this with Reflectex. I also have insulated foam above that. And uh, I don't do any top venting through here and they build up remarkably fast. I highly recommend marking your frames so that you can keep them in order when you pull them out and put them back in. And then of course this one, NFN, means I had no foundation. However you want to annotate your stuff, that's fine. And uh, this is capped honey, so they're doing great. And again, the no foundation actually looked a little better to me, a little more consistent, and they did connect it down the sides, and of course they leave plenty of vent room and passages through these frames. And by no foundation, I mean I just put the frame in here. It's got the vertical wires on it, but I did not prime it with beeswax or anything else. I just let the populations go and build as they will. And again, if you're going to harvest honey from one of these, you're basically going to make cut combs. You're going to cut through it, or you can uncap and crush and strain or whatever you need to do. If you want to get into Layens hives exclusively, and you want to spend the money, they do sell an extractor, a motorized one, through Dr. Leo's website for $1,100. Good news about that is it'll handle not only these large Layens frames, but it will handle all of your Langstroth frames as well. I already have a Langstroth deep frame extractor, so I'm not willing to spend the extra money to get one of these yet, but we're just taking a look inside. And I'm also going to walk you through a sugar shake here. We're going to check these for mites, especially now that uh, we've had a couple swarms from this one and uh, brood is down. It's a great time to check for mites. And if we have a decent mite load, we'll consider our control approaches there. So there again, the frames, uh, the foundation's kind of all over the place. I embedded the wax foundation onto the wires with heat. So it should have held, but uh, if you've ever had those uh, foundation wax from Dr. Leo's website, it's pretty thick stuff. So if it gets really warm, I can see it sagging down as it did there. If it says FN, it means I put foundation on it. NFN, no foundation. So here again, six frames in and we find brood. So from here to the entrance, we have a lot of brood. 
And this brood concerns me a little bit. So I'm looking at the frame here and I'm seeing some little specks and spots in the cells. They're not cleaned out that well, but then I'm also seeing a bunch of new bees here. So they're very fuzzy, they're light in color, and they've probably emerged from their cells within the past few days. So we don't see any new brood, no eggs, no open larva, nothing. We do see some pollen stored here and we've still got some capped brood. And this is enough for me to think that uh, if I've got Varrodestructor mites, these are the bees you wanna be counting. So I'm going to show you how to uh, collect the bees, what the quantities are, and what the parameters are for testing for the Varroa destructor mites. So I've got my kit here. You can buy these kits online. Uh, this one came from Amazon. You're going to need dry powdered sugar, a glass ball jar, a half cup scoop. Let's see if I can get that there so you can see it. Half cup, measuring cup. That gives you about 300 bees and then a one tablespoon scoop and the screen top that we're gonna put on the jar after the bees are in it. And we're gonna put our dry powdered sugar through that screen. And of course, I just take the tub and mark it with all the parameters so you don't forget. Put your name on it too. You never know who might bother and borrow your stuff. So, and of course, uh, everything you're supposed to do. Half a cup of bees, two tablespoons of sugar, two minute groom time once the sugar's on and then shake them vigorously for one minute. So that's what we're going to do. And of course I have a colander and I have coffee filters. Now we're gonna to wanna to take that lid off and we're gonna shake nurse bees off of several of the frames after we carefully check for the queen. You don't wanna be shaking the queen into your tub and giving her that sugar shake, even though she's probably gonna survive it, uh, it's good not to put her through it. This really shows a really good brood pattern we're at the end of it here. Um, there are still bees emerging from their cells. Everything looks pretty healthy here, but uh, I still want to know the Varroa mite potential load. So I've shaken a bunch of nurse bees from two different frames into this tub, and I let it sit here for a few moments because I want bees that have been out foraging and flying to go ahead and leave. And you'll find that the nurse bees are very compliant. They just kind of sit passively in the bottom there and you can very easily come back and scoop them out with your half cup scoop. That's what we're gonna do right here. There we go, 300. Some people say it's up to 350. It's a rough estimate. So we're gonna shake our half a cup of bees in there and then we wanna go ahead and get our screen top. And we're gonna put that right on top there because we don't want them to come out. Although again, they're pretty passive. And you can see in the bucket how easy they move around. And if you have a nice smooth plastic surface, you can just pour them around. Very easy to manage nurse bees. They're very laid back. And of course, you'll just dump those back on the hive and let them go down inside while you do your sugar shakes. So and I wanted you to see the brood frame there. We're gonna put that back in so they can benefit from the warmth inside. Although this is a nice hot day. It's 83 degrees Fahrenheit and it's overcast, so that's good news. Let's dump these out. They would eventually find their way back in, but uh, let's just get things going here. So now we're gonna put our dry powdered sugar, confectioner sugar, right through the screen. It would help if you sifted it ahead of time because the more loose and powdery it is the better but this is also why i don't dump it in first then put the lid on top i don't want clumps in there so that when i shake it the heavy clumps would smash your bees so we're going to roll it around and make sure they're good and sugar coated and uh, then they're going to start grooming because obviously they don't want powdered sugar all over them and uh, not only that their thorax is going to heat up and don't forget they're going to do this for two minutes and I want to set them in the shade, although it's overcast, so it's not that critical, but here they are in the shade on the lid from the tub. So I'll take my colander here and I use bun coffee filters and they work really well because when the time's done and I'm going to give it the one minute agitation here, um, then all I have to do is wash it with fresh water and the Varroa destructor mice will have a nice clean contrast. So again, the thoraxes are heating up. They started grooming themselves. You can see them working their hind legs and raking their abdomens here. And that's to dislodge the mites. So they've been doing that for two minutes. Let's give them a one minute shake. And you want to give them a really good shake. The goal is, of course, 
to help further dislodge mites and any mites that they've groomed off will go with the sugar out onto your coffee filter and keep this going for a full 60 seconds. So it's helpful to have a stopwatch. It's not critical if you're off a few seconds here and there. We just want to see what's going on. So three minutes. We've had the two minute dwell time where they groom themselves and the one minute shake time. Now we've got particles here, pretty good contrast so we can see what's going on. Now we'll take the colander and uh, we'll just rinse it with fresh water. And of course we want these bees to go back down below. So we're going to dump them out on the backer boards here and they can find their way in. I had an interesting discussion with Dr. Underwood recently who suggested that maybe these sugar shake bees don't live very long afterwards. So that was an interesting discussion. And now I'm just, this is just fresh water. We're gonna pour it through. And the key here is not to pour it, of course, above the edges of your coffee filter and it will conform to the edges of the colander and then when the filter ultimately dries out, you get a nice white contrast too, so you'll be able to count whatever is in the filter. In this case, this isn't anything at all like what I expected. Based on the appearance of the brood and what I thought were Varroa destructor mite droppings in some of the cells, I thought I would be picking up, I don't know, 10 or 11 mites, but here's what's going on. This year with my beehives, I'm getting Varroa counts like this. There is one Varroa mite on this paper. There it is right there. And here's the thing, that Varroa mite is not dead. So I sat this on the bench in my shop. I let it dry out. I came out. This was done on July 3rd. I looked at it the morning of July 4th and darn if that little Varroa mite isn't walking around on the paper. What's interesting is it has nowhere to go, and that's because they follow pheromones. Varroa mites are blind, and he would be chasing down a bee to climb back onto, but given that I had taken this into my shop, he uh, had no bees to climb onto. She, I should say. The males don't make it out of the cells at all, only the females. And that's it. One mite. So that's good news, but I'm still suspicious. I haven't been finding very many Varroa destructor mites on any of my hides this year, so I don't know what's going on. Anyway, I vacuumed off the other bees that were left so I could close up shop. Here's the vacuum open, and all they do is get out and go back inside the hive. I hope this was helpful. Have a fantastic 4th of July, and the rest of your summer, keep counting those Varroa destructor mites. <laughs>